speaking. I may have everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Bruin. Rock. Present. Mr. Trebich. Here. Mr. Rosetti. Present. Mr. Neal. Here. Mr. Duhai. Here. Mr. McBride. Absent. Myself. Present. Thank you. I could have everyone review the minutes from our October 23rd meeting with any questions, comments, notes, concerns. Or any spelling issues to Mr. Brolin. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from October 20th. Second. Well, Mr. Brolin. Mr. Rapich? Aye. Mr. Rosetti? Aye. Mr. Neal? Aye. Mr. Nye? Yes. Myself, aye. First item on our agenda this evening is a public hearing regarding a petition for text amendment regarding regulations for outdoor lighting in the village. I just would like to officially call this public hearing open at 702. Councils bit there. Uh, do we have anyone signed up to speak? If I could ask Mr. Yeah, of course. There's yeah. only four people here, Mr. Chair, so there is a sign up sheet, but if anybody wants to speak. Do I need to sign it up? Uh, prefer preferably, but okay. you can also state your name for the court reporter and okay. it'll be on. I'll do it then. Uh, my name is Mallory Anderson. Mr. Chair, I'm Mallory Anderson. I'm going Yes, right. Yeah, it's a public hearing. If it's a public hearing, then people are sworn in. Uh, Mr. Chair, do you want to minister the oath or ask the court reporter? Uh, if I could be so bold, if I could sure. ask you to do it. Raise your right hand, please. You just solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in the cause of the hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You got yes. Um, all right. So first, I'd like to thank the village for acknowledging that light pollution is an issue and taking proactive steps to address it. Wait, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Slow down. I'm acknowledging that light. Pollution. I'll, I'll start over. First, I'd like to thank the village for acknowledging light pollution is an issue and taking proactive steps to address it. My only comment is that the change as written appears to not address existing structures that would violate the new ordinance. You know, maybe I have that wrong. Um, while I totally understand we do not want to place undue burden on existing businesses, it seems that there should be some provision or timeline to get these existing structures up to this code. Um, it just seems like businesses could delay updates indefinitely and diminish the impact of these important rules. I'm sure there's other examples throughout the village, but this rule immediately makes me think of the light at the TA. I drive through the truck stop all the time. It seems like not only is it violating the rules as they're written now, much less the proposed changes, um, but it's a nuisance. Um, you know, the lights at the speedway at the truck stop, they seem to have it right. They went down, they're not a nuisance, and they're in line, I would think, with this proposed ordinance. Um, furthermore, with the proposed residential development on those 38 acres at the corner of Higgins and 20, this seems like this is only going to become a more relevant issue. So it seems can like you, sorry. Can you please slow down? Oh, sorry. Start over. Furthermore, with the proposed... furthermore with the proposed residential development on the 38 acres at Higgins and 20, um, it seems like this is only going to become a more relevant issue. So while overall, I think this is a great step in the right direction, um, including reasonable requirements to update our current infrastructure. To get them up to this code would go a long way towards improving light pollution now and in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on the public hearing portion of the lighting ordinance? I'll speak quickly. Annette Featherly, F E T H E R L E N G. Um, I have similar comments. Um, I appreciate um, the board. Um, she, 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 she and, oh. Yes. <clears throat> to solemnly swear our friend's testimony about to give the cause down here will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but yourself. Yes. Um, so I, I appreciate the board um, 
being somewhat proactive on the sense of any new business and any um, coming in that would, if this is passed, um, to change that it would better or improve the situation in, in some capacities. Um, I also am concerned of um, the existing. Um, I'd also like to better understand the, the measuring of the, the, I know in some of the preliminary documents it speaks to the candlelight and all that. It, it, I don't know how that works as far as does EEI do that? Do they have to hire it outside? Um, is that something that, that, how do we measure that for the existing um, and try to get them into compliance? Um, and then I just, I, I read the understanding as far as why Montgomery was taken and that there was, um, and used some of their information uh, as far as their grants and all of that. But I urge you to look at other communities in this area or along highways. Um, there's a lot of stricter towns than Montgomery. Um, and so I'm not saying strict is always better, but I think, you know, if we open our eyes a little bit farther and uh, look at other communities, it might be a, a good benefit, good mix. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Raise your right hand, please. You can just solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in the cause down here. You'll give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but to yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Cynthia Raskind, R A S K I N D. Um, so I don't really know anything about this. I just have a couple of questions. Um, from what I understand is that um, the outdoor lighting will be measured. And I believe maybe you guys can clarify this um, for us. That the outdoor lighting, I think that a residential area receives would not be more than one half foot candle at any point on the lot line. I don't know if that meant just like the house is, um, is putting that out or that's what the lot line can receive. So if you guys could just clarify what that is and if you have any idea of what one half foot candle or what equivalents to for a lay person, I don't know what that looks like. Um, I just know it's really dark out there and um, I live in one of the neighborhoods up there. So um, I think this will, you know, it could be a change for new developments up in that way. So. I'd love to hear more what it would look like. If you could explain that, that'd be great. That's it. Anyone else? Okay. Um. This particular lot and this particular item, we're still under public hearing portion of this. Um, two of the questions were as far as the existing businesses. Uh, Village Council, in this particular case, don't ordinances usually get grandfathered in when it comes to existing businesses? Yes. Yeah. So normally, how that operates is any existing business, anything that violates an ordinance when that ordinance is brought into effect, has to adhere to the ordinance upon any changes made that would be applicable. So any existing businesses, any existing lights, and again, Mr. Council, if you could help me if I'm still going all right. You're doing fine. Um, yeah. Any lighting that exists would not be applicable, or the ordinance would not be applicable to any lighting that already exists. When such time comes that the business, the village, the resident, wants to update their lighting, that point is at which they have to adhere to the new ordinance. So that's the grandfathering clause. Uh, obviously, we can't make sweeping changes in any ordinance that occurs. We can't just require the entire village to become compliant overnight. That usually happens upon any permits requested, any rec uh, renovations, construction, uh, teardowns. So when this, if and when this ordinance goes into effect, those changes apply to any new construction. Any existing construction stays as is. Um, the measuring, uh, again, as stated in the ordinance, the measuring or the qualification of adherence to any ordinance generally falls on our um, code enforcement officer or third party company. Uh, I forget their name actually at the moment, Josh, if you could assist with their name again. 
you. Safe bill. Thank you. I'm sorry, what was that? Safe bill. Oh, safe bill. Um, so it is a third party vendor that the village has contracted to enforce our ordinances as opposed to having staff on hand on payroll. Um, so any ordinances that are put into effect and documented in the online portal, um, those ordinances then become enforceable and that's the purview and the job of that company. So the measuring of that, they have a device that does measure candlelight, the strength of a light. Um, I couldn't explain, speak to the physics behind it or the mechanics of it, but there is a device that they can have for measuring of the light to make sure that it adheres to this. Uh, the Montgomery item, I don't have an answer for that at the moment. Um, Josh, was there any communications we may have had with the village of Montgomery in or uh, was it review of the reason, communities? The reason that Montgomery was um, kind of chosen as a model is was a recommendation from EEI. EEI is also their village engineer, and they knew that Montgomery had recently updated it through a grant. So that's the one that they sent over for our consideration, your consideration. So that's why it was used as the model. We did not go and and look through uh, multiple other codes like we sometimes do for other ordinances. Okay. So as far as the lighting ordinance, there's already been a precedent set, and we chose to follow an existing precedent. Yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd call it a precedent, but it's just something that EEI, being the village engineer in that other community, uh, recommended for us as well. All right. I would think that the grant it would have all kinds of strings attached. It'd be the most current, you know, recommendation from the government body. It was a CMAP grant, right? Right. right. Chicago metropolitan area planning or something like that. Is that what that is? So Montgomery followed the recommendations of the Chicago metropolitan area planning commission or whatever that is. Yeah, this, this just, is very similar to other lighting standards I've seen. Uh, any further questions or comments in this portion of the public hearing? Well, one lady had a question about what is a foot candle. And I'm just going to recommend that you go to Google. If you Google foot candle, you'll come up with a great explanation that would diagram it all, and you'll better understand what that is. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure I understood. I, I get the grandfathering completely, and we're not going to go back to these um, existing businesses that have signage and say you have to do anything. I get that. As far as the measuring piece, um, we still, once if once this passes, um, then there still could be enforcement, is what I'm understanding. So someone would go out there and say, TA or Road Ranger, Correct. there's a problem. And then it would move forward. Correct. Okay. All right. And then that goes through, is it safe bill, safe bill? A safe bill. Safe built. Built. Thank you. Josh, is, is that is that understanding correct that if there's an existing business like the TA, there would be no measuring for that property because that property is grandfathered in, correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. Any existing signage, lit signage, or any existing lighting would not be subject to these new zoning regulations uh, because of the grandfathering clause that Attorney Vaselli spoke of. Correct. Unless they update, right, or, or pull a permit to update their lighting, their lighting would, then, would fall within compliance under the ordinance correct. and then would also be subject to the measurement clause within this ordinance. Correct. correct. They would be required. Oh, if you ask where Mandy is from, yeah. I just want to tell the truth. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'll be swear for me. That's what you're about to give me the truth, all the truth, and then they got the truth. I so swear. The, yes, uh, Chair, Commissioner, that's correct. But that doesn't mean that they're without regulation. 
they are still regulated under any and all provisions of the village code as to their applicability and use. So it's this is a zoning issue. This isn't a quasi criminal type issue. Um, this is how we build things prospectively and how we make sure things are in compliance. And that's why we have these holdover clauses. That's why we have other sections of the code that talk about pollutants and whatnot. Further questions or comments in this portion of the public hearing? I would like to close the public hearing this evening at 7.16 p.m. Somebody seems to want me to do that. <laughs> All right, as to our next agenda, item 5B. A motion to recommend approval of a text amendment regarding regulations for outdoor lighting in the village. May I make a suggestion? By all means, questions, comments, deliberation, argument. Um, Article 6 3, item C2, when we're talking about prohibited lighting. There's a reference to festoon lighting being prohibited. I know festoon lighting is currently installed at Hampshire Social and Copper Barrel in the patio area. I I think the intent is more festoon lighting in a parking application, not necessarily in a patio lighting application. But I also see that could be a potential conflict. I I just I prefer to strike it personally. Festoon lighting being like the Edison bulbs. Hooked together or by a wire bistro lighting. Yeah, some of the, these are missing every other page. Oh, yeah. Some of them in the back, so some of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 If I may ask condition to what, yeah. what, what, what section were you looking at? It's under general requirements. Article 6 3. Yeah, it's Article okay. 6, 3, 16, C, 2. C, yeah. 2, prohibited lighting. Prohibited lighting. It's the, the last sentence in prohibited lighting talking about the student lighting. And you say the student lighting is something that you object to? I, I just, I don't, I wouldn't personally prohibit it because it's currently in place as patio lighting on, in certain businesses. I don't see it as the same nuisance as flashing lights, strobe lights, later laser lights in that same sentence. Gotcha. So I would just, I would personally recommend striking. Recommend striking, so, so I understand, recommend striking festoon lighting yes. from section C2. From being prohibited. Yes. Yeah. So, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. So we will then read flashing lights, strobe lights, laser lights. No, strapping light, flashing lights, strobe lights, and laser lights are prohibited. Correct. Yes. Got it. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I just want to ask, and perhaps Commissioner Duhai understands a little better than I do, but a couple of paragraphs down under fixtures, uh, item C4, um, it does say that out, all outdoor lighting then will need to employ full cutoff or full shielded fixtures, and I would have assumed that festoon lighting would be um, in conflict with that provision as well, unless it's, I guess, theoretically, you could have a festoon light that has some kind of cap on top of it, I suppose. I just want to point that out. Yeah, that, that was another item that I wanted to chat about. You know, I, I do agree with full shields at property lines and full cutoffs at property lines, but not necessarily embedded into the fixture. Like if you had some other type of screening, like if you're talking festoon lighting on a patio, I'm thinking Hampshire Social has that fence. In the photometrics, the engineer documents would show that that cuts off the light. It's not necessarily something built into the fixture. Um, but it's an external provision that provides the same amount of screening. Okay, so perhaps an additional uh, phrase there to that effect, staff that staff could add. 
I, I would recommend that because it, it it gives architectural liberties, but still gives you the intent. OK, we can put a, a sentence in there to that effect, you know, fully shielded fixtures provided. Uh, other, you know, we'll come up with some language, other other structures that accomplish the same the same goal. We'll come up with some good language. I, I agree, like parking fixtures, traditional full mounted fixtures, that makes sense. But some Full of the architectural choice, yeah. lighting is a little different. Any other comments? Debate? Better word than argument. All right. Uh, with no further questions or comments on this agenda item, I will entertain a motion to recommend approval of a text amendment regarding regulations for outdoor lighting in the village with the changes so noted and discussed in item 6316. C two and C four. So moved. Second. Roll call, Mr. Thelman. Mr. Rapich. Hi. Mr. Rosetti. Hi. Mr. Neal. Yes. Mr. Duhai. Yes. Myself, Nay. One nay. Next agenda item, motion to authorize the chair to report the actions of the commission this evening with appropriate findings of fact and recommendations to the village board of trustees. So second. Aye. Mr. Rosetti? Aye. Mr. Neal? Yes. Thank you, aye. Yes. Myself, aye. Uh, any general public comments this evening? Okay. Uh, I do not believe I myself have an announcement worthy of note. Does anyone else would have any announcement they'd like to make? Feel I may have omitted. Do we have a meeting? Do we? I do not actually have that. Gosh, do we have any updates on any possible agenda items for our second November meeting? Uh, at this time, there are, there is no business for the commission. I don't think there's anything coming down the line that would require a meeting at that date. Yeah, not that I'm aware of either. All right. Entertain a motion to adjourn at 7:24 p.m. I move. Second. Second. Uh, Aye. Mr. Rosetti. All right. Mr. Neal? Aye. Mr. Yes. Yeah. And myself, aye. Okay, so can I ask?